Welcome to the Jongets Games tutorial for evacuation. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I'll be showing you half of a three-player game today. Now, before we go into that, I do want to ask that if you enjoy this video, that you please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. In addition to that, if you'd like to directly support this channel and get access to a ton of exclusive content, then please go to patreon.com slash Games. Some of those exclusives are my opinions episodes. I've talked about tons of games, hundreds of games at this point, the things I like and don't don't like about them, as well as giving updated opinions on them. Also, you'll get access to some of my videos early and advertisement free, and you'll get access to an exclusive podcast feed where you can hear audio versions of all of my vlogs, including those exclusive opinions episodes I just mentioned. Now, coming back to this game, I do want to ask that if while you're watching this, some part of it jumps out to you as particularly interesting, then please comment about that down below because I'd love to see that kind of feedback. All right, let's jump into the game. Out here, we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now, before I start, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing you the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them, and I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. In it, each player is in control of a nation on this planet over here, and the sun in the solar system is expanding, which means everyone on the planet is doomed. Fortunately, we have space travel capabilities, and what we're going to do is evacuate this planet before it gets roasted and move over to this new planet that's lush and full of resources. Now, at the start of the game, each nation has very well-entrenched infrastructure on the old planet, and that infrastructure is going to generate resources for us on the old planet side of our boards. Every player board is split into two different sides, so if there is an energy here, then that can be spent on the old planet, whereas an energy over here is essentially over at the new planet and can be spent over there. Now, as we evacuate these tokens off of the planet, we are going to lower the amount of production we have on the old planet because, of course, our infrastructure is getting evacuated, and as we land things on the new planet, we will increase our production over there. The game is going to take place over a maximum of four rounds, and at the start of every round, we generate income on both of these worlds, then we perform actions. And this is done by putting action tokens down below these slots, and then we pick one of these options to activate. These actions let us do a wide variety of things, like gain resources, upgrade technologies that we have that are different from our opponents. We can also clone on the new world, prepare our infrastructure on the new world, construct spaceships that can go back and forth between the worlds. We can also build stadiums, and these are important to try and keep the morale of the population up. And arguably, most importantly, we are going to be able to settle the new world, which means any population and factories we have in orbit at the new world can be placed onto that world, at which point it will increase our production there. Now, the new world is split into four different biomes, and we have access to these biomes based off of our satellite positioning, which is essentially this big track down the middle of the board. Each round will be able to progress down this track, and the amount we progress depends on the number and types of actions that we chose. Now, as these satellites get closer to the new world, we will gain access to a variety of one-shot benefits and gain access to settling the more lucrative areas of the world. Now, that is just a general overview of most of the elements to the game, and don't worry, I'll explain in detail how all of this works while we are playing. On that note, let's now begin the game, and for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the pink player right over here. Now, as we start, I do want to point out that there are two main modes of play. At the beginning of the game, you decide which mode you're going to go with. One is the race mode, and the other is the points mode. For today's tutorial, I'll be showing you the race mode, and I will explain how the points mode works at the end of this tutorial. So, let's begin the game, and we're starting in the first out of a maximum of four rounds. Each round of the game is split into seven phases, and the first phase is income. This happens simultaneously for all of the players, and the way this works is we are going to generate income for our production on the old world, as well as the new world. At the start of the game, obviously no one has actually made it to the new world just yet, so there is no production there. But if there was, we could tell because these markers would be in positions on this track. For example, if we had this situation, we would generate four energy and we place four energy cubes on the new world. We'd also generate two steel and no food. At the beginning of the game, though, we have zero production on the new world, like I said. However, over here, we have a bunch of production. Each player has a symmetrical number of these tokens, but they're in different spots in their various nation areas. 
Each token that is not flipped over is going to generate resources on the old world depending on the color of the icons within it. Let's focus in on our area, and as you can see, there are green, orange, and gray icons. It's true there are green circular population icons and green square factory icons, but for production's sake, they function identically. This right here will generate two food, and this will generate one food. So we just count the number of green icons we have everywhere, including these progress bonus tokens. And at the start of the game, it ends up being seven of the food, seven energy, and seven steel. So we produce all of that on the old world side of our board. And then we have to feed our population food. Now the amount of food required on each of the world is shown where the current round marker is. As you can see, we require zero food on the new world and five food on the old world. Once we move to the second round, it still is zero food on the new world and four food on the old world as we are starting to evacuate so there are less people. In the third round, we'll start to have to pay food at the new world and it's the same amount as the old world. And in the fourth and final round of the game, it will have flip-flopped with the majority of our food necessities being at the new world. Once again, we are here though, so we have to spend five of our food and we just made seven. So we spent the five and we have two left over. Just to point out, these are worth three of that resource. So this is steel, that's food, and that is energy. Now this is a long way of saying that during the first income of the game, all players will start with seven steel, seven energy, and two food on the old world, and no resources on the new world. All right, we've all simultaneously finished our income. So we can move into the second out of seven phases within the round, and this is the action phase. Now the action phase happens in player order, and that's defined by this track over here. We were randomly given the first position, so we'll take the first action. Yellow will go next, and blue will go after that. The turn order can change, and that happens later on in the round, and I'll explain how that happens later. So we can now take our first turn in the action phase. Now the way an action phase turn works is we have to look to the bottom of our board and as you can see there are four different columns. We're going to choose one of these columns and then we'll place an action card face down on it. There is a large deck of these action cards and when you're not playing with the advanced action mode you never flip these cards over. Every card has different effects on their other side and these are only used when you play with the advanced action module and I'll explain how that works at the end of the tutorial. So we'll just keep this face down. It's essentially an action counter, and we're gonna choose any one of these columns. If we had already chosen one of these earlier in the round, we could choose it again. And I think we're going to go into this column here. Now, as we place the action counter down, we have to slide the action tracker over once. That's showing that this is our first action of the round, and if there was an energy cost on that spot, we'd have to pay it immediately. So this means the first and second action of the round don't cost any energy, the third action will cost two, the fourth will be three, and the fifth and beyond action of the round will cost three energy each. This is, of course, our first action, and we don't have to pay any energy. And speaking of paying energy, I do want to point out that you are allowed to place into the same column as you did earlier, like I said, but if you place the fourth or more card into that column, you have to pay one extra energy total. So this fourth card here would cost an extra energy, including any energy here. If you did it a fifth time, that would be yet again, one extra energy for going to that same column plus any energy for the action that you went to. So that is essentially a penalty to stop you from going to the same column over and over and over again. But if you want to do that, you can, as long as you can afford the energy costs. So once again, we picked this slot here, and that means we're gonna perform one of the action sections of that column. The number of sections varies with the column. This one has three sections, and we choose one of these and perform all of the icons within that section. As you can see over here, if we had gone to that spot, this section has three icons, and we can perform those in any order, whereas where we went, there are single icons in these sections. We're gonna go for the middle one. That lets us construct a spaceship. This means we can buy any of the three spaceships that are currently out here in the market, and every time you go to buy a spaceship, as well as a stadium or take an infrastructure card, you can spend one resource of any type from either world to discard as many cards as you want from that market, and then deal out new ones before you potentially make that purchase or draw that card. I don't think we want to do that though. I like this ship right here. So we are going to buy it, and the way this works is we have to pay the resources in the top left corner from one of the two worlds, and all of the resources have to come from that world. Then the ship is constructed at the world where those resources were paid. So if we paid four steel and two food from the new world, 
The ship would be constructed there. Obviously, we don't have anything at the New World, though, so we are going to construct this at the Old World, and that will cost us four steel and both of our food. So we have no food left over here for the moment. Now, ships are very important because they are how we evacuate from the Old World, and then we can pay energy to fly those ships to the New World, which will aid us as we try to settle that world as we continue playing. Now, this movement happens during the transport phase, which is the phase that happens right after the action phase, and I'll explain how that worked in detail once we get there. After purchasing a ship, we slide the remaining ships over and then draw a new one from the top of the deck. Now, if the section that we chose with our action had more icons, we could do those now. However, this just has a single icon, which is by a ship, so we are done with our turn. That means the yellow player now can take an action. After thinking through their options, they are going to buy a ship as well with this action. The ship they want is the same cost as the one that we built. That's going to be four steel and two food. And of course, they pay it at the old world. We can slide these down and see a new ship. And now it's time for the blue player to go. For their first action, they're going to place over here. Now there are two different slots they can choose from for this action, and they're going to go with the one on the right. Now they can perform these icons in any order of their choice, and they'll go with this one first. This simply gives them one resource. It could be energy, steel, or food. And whenever you get benefits like this, you can put it onto either of the worlds. They're going to put this food into the new world with this action. Then they'll perform the other action icon, and that lets them research technology. So let's focus in, and as you can see, they have a 3x3 three three grid of these technology tiles. Now, every single one of these say 3 on them, whereas all 9 of our technologies have a 1. That's because there are 4 different sets of technology, and during setup, each player randomly gets a full set. Now, the technology set is split into 3 groups of 3 and that is marked by the pips. During setup, you randomly put the one pips at the bottom, the two pips in the middle, and the three pips on top. So every time you play with the three set of technology, you get all nine of these, but the relative positioning within these rows is going to be different. Now, when you actually gain a technology, the way it works is you select one of your columns, and then you will develop the lowest technology there. So blue has to pick a column, and they're going to go with the middle column. Now again, they go all the way down until the lowest undeveloped technology, and that is this one. As you can see, each of the lowest technologies have a single circle area, and you put one of these generic markers down. As soon as all of the circles on that technology are filled in, you gain that effect. What this means is they immediately gain this technology. However, in the future, if they do another technology action and they decide to choose the middle column again, this will go here because that is the lowest technology they don't have yet. And having the token on the left side does not mean you get anything. Instead, they'd have to do yet another technology action. And now when they select the middle column, they could slide this over and that would activate this technology. Of course, if this is here and they do another technology action, they don't have to pick the middle column. They could choose a different column. Now, once again, the bottom ones just take a single action to activate. So this technology is online, and it says the blue player immediately gains a steel factory. Now, factories come in these tokens up here. Each player has four of the factories for each of the three resource types. Whenever you gain a factory, you get it essentially for free, and then you put it on either world of your choice, but you're always going to put it onto the new world. There's no reason to gain factories at the old world because, of course, we're evacuating there. Now, that technology specifically got them a steel factory, and they put it over here. Now, this means it's essentially in orbit around the new world, so it doesn't give them any benefits yet, but this could be settled onto the new world with an action. When we focus back on this technology, it also says that whenever the blue player prefabs a steel factory, they can prefab a second factory of any type. Prefabbing a factory is specifically this icon there. That means if for an action you put the card down here and select the leftmost option, you can prefab any type of factory, but the cost for it is going to be one resource of that type. So blue could go here, for example, and spend this one food at the new world to prefab a food factory at the new world. Whereas if they spent the food on the old world, they would prefab that factory over here. Now, technically, having factories over here isn't a full waste because you can put these factories onto ships and send them to the new world. And I'll explain how that works when we get there. 
So once again, this technology gained them a free steel factory, and in the future, whenever they prefab a steel factory, which means they spend a steel, they get that steel factory and they can prefab a second one. They of course have to pay for both of those, but that does make this action significantly more efficient. Of course, Blue does have to move their action token forward, and that's finished their turn. This means we can take another action. So let's focus back over here. Now I do want to point out that we don't have to take an action. We can optionally pass, and if we pass, we won't take any more actions for the rest of this phase. We certainly want to take more actions though, so let's choose one. And I think let's go here and also gain a resource and develop a technology. Let's do the technology first. We're going to activate our middle column, that will go here, and now this effect is ongoing. It says action three no longer costs us energy. So essentially the first three actions of the round cost no energy instead of the first two. Of course we had to spend this action to get that enabled, but I still think that'll be good in the long run. Of course we also gain one resource and we can decide where we want to put it and what type it is. Now as we figure this out, I want to draw your attention once again to the ship that we bought. Now it shows these two energy cost icons and that means in order to fly that ship later on during this round, we have to spend two energy. With that in mind, I think I'm just going to allocate two of our energy over there so we don't accidentally spend it in order to do actions. So we know we want to transport that ship and if we do, we have five more energy to spend. We also know that on our next turn, this third action won't cost us any energy. And I think for this benefit, we're just going to gain another energy and we'll put it over here at the old world. Later on in the game, there's definitely reasons to put energy at the new world. And I'll explain why that may be later on in the tutorial. Okay, that's finished our turn, which means yellow can go. They've also pre-allocated a couple of energy over here on that ship. You certainly don't need to do this, the rules don't tell you to, but it's a good way to make sure you don't accidentally spend energy that you want to use transporting those ships. And for their action, they're going to place into the leftmost column. Now as you can see, there are two sections they can choose from after placing over here, and one of these involves just a technology advance icon. Now that seems strictly worse than this over here. That is a technology advance and one resource of your choice. The only real difference between these two slots is the number in the bottom middle. This shows a 1, whereas that one shows a 4. Now later on during the progress phase of the round, we're going to count up these numbers, and that is going to be our progress amount. Then we'll use the progress that we've gained to move our artificial intelligence satellites from the old world along this track towards the new world. The more progress that you have, the further you go, and the closer your satellites are to the new world, the better your logistical options are there, as well as potentially production. But of course, as these satellites leave the old world, we start to lose efficiency and production there as well. You'll see exactly how that works later on, but for now it looks like yellow is prioritizing gaining more progress with this action. So they choose one of these two options, and they're going to go with the left option. Now that is going to get them one resource of their choice, and of course they choose which world to place it on. As they're thinking about this, they do have to advance once along the action track. And they've decided to create a steal on the new world. The other benefit they get over here is a resource conversion action. Now this says three times they can choose a resource that they have and turn it into a different type of resource. They do have to place the new resource on the world where the old resource was taken and these three resource conversions can be split up. So you could do one over here and two over there, for example. Once again, where the cube leaves is where the new cube is going to arrive. Now they have decided they are going to convert all three of this steel on the old world into energy. That's gonna, of course, go onto the old world. They only have energy over here, and that certainly implies that they have some expensive action plans in the future. Well, let's finish their turn which means blue can go, and they are going to go to the same spot and do the same action that the yellow player just did. For the gained resource, they're going to take a steel onto the new world, and for the resource conversion, this three steel is going to turn into three energy. So they are of the same mind, although I think their plans are quite different than what the yellow player wants to do. That was a quick turn for them, which means we get to go again, and I think let's buy another ship. We can do that by putting a second card down here. Remember, we have to spend an extra energy once we put the fourth or beyond card within the same column. That's the second card, so there is no extra cost. Of course, we shift over here, and normally we'd have to spend one energy, but this technology says the third action costs no energy, so we don't have to pay for it. As I said, we're going to buy another ship, and let's buy this one. It costs three steel. 
we have exactly three steel on our old world, so we can put that ship here, and that ship only has a single energy cost. Let's put this over here, again, to remind ourselves that we want to spend that transporting later on this round. After reserving that energy on the ships, you can see we have five energy left, and if we did two more actions this round, that would cost five energy total. So I think that's likely what we're going to do. Of course, we don't have to spend all of our energy. We could pass and all of the resources that we have stay. There is no limit to the amount of resources we can store on either world. Well, our turn is done, and of course we need to bring out a new ship. And now yellow can go again. They are going to go to the far left column, They'll slide this over, that is going to cost them one energy, and now they're not going to do another conversion, they are going to gain a technology. They're going to target their rightmost column, and that will go down here, which activates this technology. That says whenever their lead progress marker passes a transition, they gain one resource of their choice, and of course that can go on either world. Now, I'll talk more about those progress markers once we get to the progress phase, but it's likely they're going to get at least one benefit from this in this first round of the game. Okay, yellow is done, which means blue can go, and they're going to activate the third action column. They have three options to choose from. We've already talked about the prefab option, and that's not what they're going to do. Again, if they did use it and they built a steel factory, then this technology would let them prefab another factory. Instead, they could go with the right-hand section, which would give them two infrastructure actions. I don't think they're going to do that, so I'll explain infrastructure actions later. They're going for the middle option, and this lets them clone two population markers. Now, in order to do this, they have to spend one food, and then they'll gain two population through this process of cloning. Now, I do want to point out that we can only clone population at the new world. You can see the cloning icon there. There is no cloning icon on the old world. These icons clearly show that we can construct stadiums and prefabricate factories on either world, but again, only clone at the new world. Now, they do have to spend the food from the new world to do this, and this is why they gained that food earlier, and then they clone two population markers. That just means they take two of these markers and they put them over there so they are in orbit around the new world, ready to be settled. Settling does cost an action, and considering what the blue player has done so far, I think it's pretty likely they're going to be settling in this first round. Now, of course, that was their third action, and they did have to spend one energy to do it, and their turn is done. So, we get to go again. We have five energy at our disposal. Technically, we have eight, but of course, we allocated some to our ships already. And let's do an action that is going to cost us two energy. And I think, just like our opponents, we're going to head over here to the leftmost column. That is primarily because it's going to give us four progress points, and I'll explain why I'm doing this very soon. Of course, we get to do one of these two options, and I think let's gain a technology. This will be our second technology action of the round. Now, we could, of course, choose the middle. If we did, we'd put this token there, and we would not actually have this technology yet. I don't think we want to. This is a great technology, but we don't need it yet. Let's go for the rightmost column. That means this happens, and since it's a first row technology, it's immediately online. That says if you gain a year-end bonus, you also gain one resource. With that in mind, let's focus up here, and this is the year-end bonus card. Now, we put four of these out at the start of the game. They are technically face-up, and players can look at them if they want. The bottom one has a flag. There are two of these flag cards. So you randomly put one of these down, and then randomly choose three of the non-flag cards to go here, and this gives us a goal. This card shows 9 and 12, and some bonuses. And in order to gain these year-end bonuses, the amount of progress that we have from our actions has to exactly match this number. We are angling to hit the 9, and when we focus back over here, we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So we are at exactly 9. Now again, if we gain a year-end bonus, we gain an extra resource. So we have even more of an incentive to hit that target. And if we do, we'll gain a steel and a food, which we can put on either planet of our choice, and we'll clone a population onto the new world without having to spend anything. Now, there's always going to be two of these goals. If we hit 12 instead of 9, we would get two steel, which is arguably a worse result. But of course, in order to get to 12, you likely did more actions. So this is sort of a compensator giving you some bonuses for not going as crazy with the actions that you play within the round. Now, as I said, you have to exactly hit the number to get that benefit, and this is technically called the strict mode of scoring. There is a generous variant in the rulebook that you can choose instead. We're not playing with that today, but if we were, the way that would work is if you have progress equal to or lower than one of these, you get that benefit. So if you ended with 
0 to 9 progress, you would get this benefit. If you ended with 10 to 12 progress, you'd get this one. You cannot take the lower one if you're in between. And if you are above the larger number, you still don't get anything, even when playing with the generous variant. So this is why we went over there to try and hit 9. And even though we have 3 energy over here, which is enough to do another action the next time it's our turn, I think we're going to pass because we want to stay here to get those bonuses. And I have more important plans for this energy. And I'll explain that in the transportation phase. Okay, we are done, which means yellow can go. They are going to do an action. That is going to cost them 2 energy. And for the third time in the round, they're going to the far left spot. That means their progress amount is currently at 14, so they are already over both of those year-end bonuses. They seem to be very fine with that, though. Now, they are going to do another technology action, and they want to target their rightmost column. So they will put this token here. They still need another research action to bring this technology online. All right, their turn is done, which means blue can go again, and they're going to perform an action in the second slot. There are three options over here. We've already seen the build spaceship action happen three times this round. On the right, there is a construct stadium action. And the way this works is you choose one of the face-up stadiums over here. You then pay the resources that are indicated, and you build that stadium onto the world where those resources were spent. So, for example, if they were to spend their four steel, they could construct the stadium onto their old world. Remember, this icon right here shows that stadiums can be constructed on the old world or the new world, but of course you have to have the resources on the new world to do this. They do have four steel, so they could do this action. They're not going to, but I wanted to show you how it works. The stadium would now be constructed, and as you can see, stadiums have happy faces on them. Now, this is the only real effect of these stadiums. The happy faces are primarily important for turn order in the race mode, although they are also the tiebreaker for that mode. Although, if you're playing in the points mode, they are also worth a significant amount of points if you have the most. Once again, I'll explain the details of the points mode at the end of the tutorial, though. Now, technically, happy faces on stadiums on the old world don't count once the game is over, because, of course, the old world has been blasted away by the sun that's expanding. Fortunately, stadiums can be transported with ships to the new world, and stadiums over here are very important. Once again, they are essentially an abstractification of the overall happiness of your people. Now, again, the blue player is not actually going to construct a stadium on their turn. Instead... They're going to perform the first settle action of the game. Now, when you do this, you choose one hexagon that's empty on the new world that you have access to, and you settle into all of the empty slots in that hexagon. Every population that you place is going to cost one steel from the new world. When settling, you're going to place population tokens as well as potentially factories. And this is why they built a steel over here, because it, it looks like they are planning on placing a population down. Essentially, you have to spend the steel to construct the housing for that population, whereas this factory is already packed up from hypothetically the old world, and it doesn't need any extra resources to be settled. Now they can perform their settle action. So again, they have to choose an empty hex spot on the new world. Now the new world is split into four biomes. There is tundra, desert, forest, and sea, and the biome you can settle into depends on the position of your satellites. Now at the start of the game, everyone's satellites are right over here, and those are going to move during the progress step later on this round. As you can see, there is a tundra icon, and that means at the beginning of the game, everyone has access to the tundra biome on the new world. You only gain access to the desert biome once you cross this spot on the progress track with at least one of your satellites. You gain access to the forest biome once a single satellite passes this spot. And finally, you gain access to the sea biome once at least one of your satellites crosses this spot way over here. Thematically, these are artificial intelligence satellites, and the closer they are to the new world, the more aid they can provide us as we logistically figure out how to settle these more difficult but also more productive regions of the planet. This is, of course, a long way of saying that blue can only settle in the tundra area. Now, that is the largest biome of the planet, and they have to choose one of these empty hexes. After thinking it through, they are going to select this hex here. Now, as you can see, it has a single gray population spot on it, and that means one population from the blue player's new world orbit can be placed right here. But again, every population token that's settled is going to cost one steel from the new world. They have this steel, so they can spend that to place this down. And then they're going to increase their steel production on the new world once. 
I do want to point out that in other biomes, some of these spots for population have various pips in them. This is the amount of increase you get. So if they had built over here, then that single population would increase their steel production three times. But of course, this is in the C biome, which is very hard to get to. You frequently can't get there at all or only at the end of the game. And it also has an extra restriction printed on it. Now, those restrictions also show up here in the tundra. You can see there is this wind and sun icon. Now, in order to settle a hex that has one or more of these icons, your progress markers must be on spots on this track that have at least that number of icons. So to go here, they would need to have a progress marker on at least one sun. And then by choosing this hex, they would put a population and a factory down for the single action. Now, of course, nobody has progressed on this track yet, so they don't have access to any of those icons. And that's why they decided to go here instead. Once again, that's going to increase their steel production by once on the new world. And they can show that by sliding this production token up once. That means they'll produce one steel on the new world in the next income phase of the game, which is, of course, the first phase of each round. Well, let's finish their action because, of course, for each settle action, you just select a single hex and then you fill all of the empty slots, which they have successfully done. So we can go and we're going to pass. As I said before, we are already at the perfect spot to gain that year end bonus. And I want to save this energy so that we can transport it to the new world. Again, I'll explain that in more detail once we get to the transport phase. So we have passed, which means we take no more turns for the rest of this action phase. And now yellow goes. They are going to go to the far left spot for the fourth time in this round. Once again, once you place the fourth or beyond card in this slot, you have to spend one extra energy. So they have to spend one energy to do that. Then this will slide over and they have to spend three energy for this action. And for the third time in the round, they are going to develop technology. They want to select the far right column, and so instead of adding a new token, they just slide this over, and now this level 2 technology is online. That says once per action phase, they can gain a factory. Remember, when you gain a factory, you don't spend anything for it. If something tells you to build something, like this says build a stadium, you do have to pay the resources. Now, it is currently the action phase, so they're going to activate this immediately. They are going to gain a energy factory, and they're going to place it over here on the new world. That's not surprising at all. That means this factory is ready to be settled onto the new world. Although, when we look at their energy stores, it does not look like they're going to have enough energy to perform an action to settle that in this first round of the game. They knew that, though. It seems like this whole first round was all about setting themselves up for a bunch of settling in the second round of the game. Okay, they are done which means blue can go. Now, I just realized I did forget to move this over. They did have to spend two energy for that fourth action on their previous turn. They have seven energy left, and they are going to settle again. That is going to cost them three more energy. And when we look at their new world, they have one population to settle, but they don't actually have any steel. And again, you need steel to settle population. Fortunately for them, they have this steel factory. They can settle that instead. And again, there is no extra cost to settle a factory. Once again, they have to build into the tundra into an empty spot, and they're going to choose this spot here. They don't have to build adjacent to where they were. They could go here, for example, or way over there, but there are sometimes reasons to build in specific spots, and, and I imagine I'll be explaining those in more detail very soon. Now, as you can see, this factory spot does not have a color on it. That means any of the three factory types can be constructed there. And as soon as you do that, you increase the production of that type by one on the new world. So this is also going to increase their steel production by one. And it's up to the two slot now. Okay, they are done with their turn. And we are skipped in turn order because we've already passed. The yellow player can go, but it's no surprise to see them pass. They have a single energy over here. Technically, they have three energy. They could spend all three of this to do another action. But then it doesn't seem like they'd have enough energy to transport this ship. And they do want to do that this round. So they're going to pass. Which means play once again comes to the blue player. They are going to do another action. That is going to cost them three energy. And they're going to go back over here to the one progress action slot. They have to pick one of these options. Both of them give a resource. That one lets them gain technology, as we've seen. And this one gives them two infrastructure actions. This is the one they've decided to go with, and they are going to gain a resource first. The resource they want is a steel. And now they're going to use their first out of two infrastructure actions. Now, each infrastructure action lets you do one of two things. The first is you can draw an infrastructure card from the face-up market near the board. The second is you can play an infrastructure card from your hand down into the new world, as long, of course, as you can afford it. Now, just like spaceships and stadiums, you can spend one resource from either world to discard as many of these as you want and bring new ones out. 
But it looks like they're not going to do that. They are going to draw this infrastructure card into their hand for their first infrastructure action. Now they have one more infrastructure action, and I do want to point out that this does not refill from the deck until the end of their turn. With this second action, they can draw one of these, but instead, they've decided to construct this infrastructure card that they picked up with their first action. Now the cost is listed here in the top left corner. That shows a single steel, and infrastructure is always constructed on the new world which means they have to spend a steel from the new world. They've set this up to work so they can spend that steel, and that infrastructure will stay constructed on the new world for the rest of the game. Now, the bottom part of every infrastructure card shows a condition on the left and production benefits on the right. Now, you don't have to meet this condition when you construct this infrastructure card. The rulebook doesn't specifically say to do this, but in general, when I construct an infrastructure that is not activated yet, I put it sideways. The moment you meet the condition of this card, it will activate and increase your production accordingly. Now this restriction says the blue player must occupy two Tundra locations that are in the same diagonal. With that in mind, we can focus back here on the board, and once again, this is a hex grid. So for the purposes of this iconography, this means those two Tundra spots need to be in one of this line or the that line. There is another icon that looks like this with a horizontal line that has arrows, and this is specifically for spots that are on this axis on the planet. Now, the card that they played just shows two Tundra icons. That means they can have any kind of settlements in those spots, and these two Tundra hexes are indeed on a diagonal. So that's going to activate this. If, for example, the blue player had bought this infrastructure and played it instead, that would require them to have two Tundra on this line, which of course they don't, and each of these hexes must have at least one population token. Obviously, they have a population token here, but a factory token there, so that wouldn't have counted even if this was over here. I want to point out the other infrastructure card that's out here. That just says you have to have one tundra with at least one factory on it and one desert with at least one population on it. The specific positioning on the planet doesn't matter for this one. Now, of course, they did not take either of these infrastructure cards. The one they played is this, and as I showed, it is now activated. This means that their food production on the new world increases by one, and their steel production increases by one, and they have done a great job of starting to get production going on the new world, and they've done that by essentially ignoring the old world. They did not construct a ship, they won't be transporting anything, and this is just one of the strategies that you can take in the game. Now, before we move on, I'm sure you noticed this exclamation point icon on the card they played. Some infrastructure cards show that, whereas others do not. Now, this is a reminder to the players about the restriction that you can never have multiple infrastructure cards with the exact same art on them. If a card has an exclamation point, that means there is at least one more card in this overall deck that shares that image, and you just have to be careful to not accidentally take two infrastructure cards with that. This one right here does not have an exclamation point, which means this is the only card in the deck that has that art on it. We can take a peek at the deck, and as you can see, this one right here has the same art. The restriction at the bottom is different, but that still doesn't matter. You're not allowed to have multiple of these in play. Okay, blue is done with their turn. We have to refresh this by sliding down and then drawing a new infrastructure card. I do want to point out that most of these cards show a one on them, but near the end, they show twos, and the twos generally have harder restrictions showing some of the more difficult biomes to get into, like the sea areas. Now, everyone else has passed, so even though Blue finished their turn, it is now their turn again, and they are going to pass. They have just one energy left over here. They certainly cannot afford to do a seventh action this round. Once all players pass, we then move into the third phase of the round called transport. Now, this phase can happen simultaneously, and we'll start by taking a look at our transportation. Now, we can just ignore the blue player entirely because you can only transport if you have ships, and they've neglected to construct any ships up to this point. Now, the first thing we do in the transport phase is load up the ships that we are planning on sending over to the new planet. In order to send them, we have to spend energy, and we've already allocated this energy, so let's load both of these ships up as much as possible. With that in mind, let's take a look at the old world, and specifically our nation's area of that world. Now, there are a bunch of these tokens on the world, and these ships have up to three different ways they can transport. The first is simple. It's over on the right-hand side, and that tells you how many resources from the old world that ship can transport to the new world. Each of these can transport up to two resources, so that's certainly nice. The next option is potentially here. Now, we can see this ship does not have any icons there, but this one does. This is the building capacity for this ship. Now that shows a one, a factory symbol, a slash, and a stadium icon. 
This means the building capacity of this ship is a single factory or a stadium. At the start of the game, we all begin with a single stadium at the Old World. It doesn't have any happy faces on it, but there are definitely reasons to transport this from the Old World to the New World, but I don't think we're going to be doing that. Instead, we're going to use this building capacity to pick up one of the factories from our area of the Old World and put it onto this ship. As you can see, there are three factories on the Old World, one for each of the types. I think let's take this one. Now, the reason for that is because, as you can see, there are no colored borders around this circle. Every other spot on the Old World has at least one colored section. We can see yellow and gray, yellow and blue, this is just blue, and that one is just gray. Now, this relates to the evacuation bays on these ships, but this middle section has none of those colors. That means you can only pick up a factory from this location using building capacity. So we pick this up and we show it by flipping the tile over and then taking one of that matching factory type and we put it onto the ship. Now that occupies this portion of the ship, but this ship also has an evacuation bay, and that is this area. Now those colors match up with the colors around these spots that we want to evacuate. This big ship right here has two different spots. That means it can pick up one of these that has at least one blue section around it, and it can pick up another one that has at least a yellow section around it. Let's go ahead and pick this factory up. As you can see, there is yellow and blue, which means that matches either of these options. That was an energy factory, so we can put that there. And we'll go ahead and use the yellow part of our evacuation bay for that. We have this last spot that shows blue, and I think we're going to evacuate this spot here for it. Now, this shows two population on it. Remember, each one of these gives us production on the old world, and as we flip them over, that is us dismantling our infrastructure. So our income is going to be lower on the old world at the start of the next round because we are evacuating, but evacuation is literally the name of the game, and we very much want to do that. Now again, we are going to target this spot, and what that means is we will take two population tokens from our supply, and we will load those up into that part of the evacuation bay. Then we'll flip this over to show those two population are on this ship. And now this ship is pretty much done. We can still put resources on it, but we also have this ship over here and it does not have any building capacity. It does have one slot in its evacuation bay though, and that is gray. I picked this one up because the first ship that we have got yellow and blue, so having some color variety is definitely nice. I think we're going to use this to pick up that factory. We were able to pick up all three of our factories from the old world in this very first transportation phase. Again, we can do this because there is gray around the border for that factory. So we flip that over. We put a factory right here. And of course, technically, these ships are still over here near the old world side of our board. Now, as I said, they have resource transportation capacity as well. For us, we have two and two. And on the old world, there is three energy. I think we should transport two of this three energy over. That will leave one energy behind to help us afford actions in the next round. We could put both of these on this ship or that ship or split them up. It doesn't really matter between those. It would be nice, I suppose, if we had more resources to load up onto these ships, but we seem to do a good job of spending as much as we could. Again, we could send this as well, but I don't think we should. At this point, we are done loading our ships, and now we are going to transport them. Now, transportation is simultaneous from the old world to the new world, and the new world to the old world. We don't have any ships on the new world, though, so let's transport. That means these fly over here. We, of course, spent all of that energy, and then these ships put everything on them into orbit around the new world. So we have a couple of energy, a couple population, and three of these factories. So we didn't do any settling in the first round of the game, but we are very set up to do a bunch of settling in the next round of the game. Now you may be wondering why we have energy over here. Up to this point, we've only been spending energy over on the old world for these actions. And the reason for this is because if you look up here, we have to spend energy to send these ships from the new world back to the old world. The cost is always one energy per ship. It doesn't matter what the cost is printed on them because of course the ships are empty. So we sent two energy with these ships and we will likely use this energy to transport both of them back in the next transportation phase. Of course, that is going to happen after the next action phase. For now, we could put the energy over here, just allocating it. Of course, technically it's still in orbit around the new planet. 
Now, once again, when you transport ships, it's simultaneous. So if you have a ship at the old world going to the new and the new world going to the old, they do this. That is a long way of saying you can't use energy that you transported in this phase to then send another ship back. Okay, we are done transporting. Obviously, blue isn't transporting anything, but the yellow player is. And their ship has two building capacity. Now, that means they could take two factories from the planet, or a factory and a stadium, or two stadiums. You could, of course, also take less. In this case, they are going to go for this one, because once again, that requires building capacity. It cannot go into an evacuation bay because it has no colors around it. So that will load a food factory onto the ship. And then using this evacuation bay, they're going to evacuate these two food producing populations. They show that by loading these up. And of course, they have one more building capacity, so they could evacuate one of the remaining factories. But instead, they've decided to use that other building capacity to load up their starting stadium. That just gets loaded onto the ship. And lastly, there is a single resource holding capacity on it, and they have one energy left. They're going to load that there, and now the ship transports. Of course, it spent this two energy to do so. Then that stadium gets offloaded onto the new world. Again, it doesn't have any happy faces, but it still could be very important, and I'll explain why later. They also offload a couple of population, this food factory, and an energy. It's likely they'll use that energy to send this ship back in the next round. All right, the transportation phase is done. Again, Blue just ignored that entirely. The game is called evacuation, but for the moment, they appear to not be in a rush over here at the old world. So we can move into the fourth phase of the round, which is the turn order phase. In this phase, we count up the number of happy face symbols everyone has. Now those primarily show up on the stadiums that we have constructed, but they can also show up on technologies. As you can see, if Blue had instead developed this right hand technology in addition to this effect, that would give them one happy face. They didn't do that though. In fact, none of us did. The two technology set over here has no happy faces on it. The one set has a single happy face, but it's on the level three technology spot. So definitely not something you get to early in the game. Nobody has actually constructed a new stadium. So that means everyone is at zero happy faces. And whenever there is a tie, you switch the positions on this turn order track. Now, if somebody had more happy faces, they would go to the front of the turn order track. So even one happy face would be enough to lock in the first action of the next round. Again, nobody has any happy faces, so there is going to be a full reversal of these tokens. Blue goes before yellow, goes before pink, which is of course the opposite of pink before yellow before blue. Turn order is done, so now we can move into the fifth phase, which is progress. Now the way this works is everyone is going to count up all of the progress value of the actions they took earlier on in the round. This will happen in the new turn order, so we'll start with blue. And they have four, seven, nine, eleven. 12, 13. With that 13 progress, they now need to move their progress tokens exactly 13 times combined between the two of them. You are not allowed to progress less than the amount of progress you have. They're going to start by moving from here where all of these tokens begin. And technically the way this works is these tokens move along this passing lane around to the outside. Any number of tokens can be in this passing lane at the same time, and they've decided to go one, two, three, four. You skip over this. That is not technically a spot, but the moment you cross over these, sometimes things happen. This is technically called a transition, and when we focus in, it shows a single satellite transitioning over and then two satellites transitioning over. Now, this means the first time a satellite goes over this transition, one of the two satellite production tokens on the old world will be flipped over. That thematically shows the efficiency on the old world decreasing as the artificial intelligence satellite gets further away from the planet. Obviously, that's bad. That means the blue player will make one less production of all three resource types. This spot right here means when the second of the two progress tokens transitions over, the second of these tokens will flip over as well. So it's essentially a penalty. You don't want to cross over this twice for as long as possible. And Blue is going to try to avoid that if they can. Now, up to this point, they've used one, two, three, four movement. They'll keep going five, six, seven, eight. And if they stopped here, they could go onto either of these spaces because they are empty. If there was already a progress token on either, they couldn't go there. Now, this shows a sun symbol, and that is used for settling over on the new world. Also, these show resource symbols. If they stopped here or there, they would gain one resource of their choice right now, and they'd, of course, put it on the planet of their choice. 
They're not going to stop here, though. They have moved eight times. They will go another two, bringing them here. That is 10 movement. And this progress token is now right against this second transition. Now, they've used 10 of their 13 progress, and they are not allowed to go any further. The reason for this is because at no time can there ever be more than one transition between the two progress tokens. The other one is still back over here, so by moving from here to there, there are two transitions, and that is not legal. That means they can't move their forward progress token anymore, so they have to move the back one. Again, they have three progress remaining, so they must go one, two, three, and they just barely did not cross this twice. Now, once you're done using your progress, you can move your tokens to any empty space in the same area of that track. Blue has decided to put this token there, covering up the double sun spot. That will provide them two sun icons for the purpose of settling on the new world in the next round. And over here, they'll go on to the one wind spot. There is never a reason to have more than three of these icons, so they don't need three sun, for example. All right, they've used all of their progress. Of course, if they had gone onto any spot that shows these icons, they would gain those benefits immediately. Of course, because blue went first, they are also blocking these specific locations. Uh, players can always leave a progress token in this passing lane, but of course, going on to these spots with the icons is a good thing. I do also want to be clear that at the start of each progress phase, all of the tokens that are out here already get moved into the passing lane before the first person does their progress. So the first player to progress will always have open reign on all of the open slots. It also means when you progress, you can move one of your tokens and not move the other at all, and then slot it back into potentially the same spot it was in before. So if blue had left this here and maybe gone there to get a resource, and to the next round, it moved over there, and this one moved and they didn't move that, they could slide this back over and gain that resource again, as long, of course, as that was open when it was their turn to progress. Of course, they are actually like this. Blue is done progressing, and now yellow can progress. They definitely had progress in mind in this first round of the game. They have four action cards on the four progress spot. That is 16 plus another two, so 18 progress total. They'll start by going one, two, three, four. When they cross over to this, they of course flip one of these down. Then they'll go five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and that is their second progress token crossing over this transition. That means they lose this one as well. So by gaining so much progress, they've also lost two steel, two food, and two energy production on the old world. At this point, they've used 14 out of their 18 progress, and you must use all of it, so they have to keep on moving. Now, there is no transition between their two tokens, so they can move this token across that transition there, because now there is just one transition between the two. They have three remaining movement, and with it, they will go one, two, three. They could have moved their forward one even more, but they decided to leave it where it is. That's used all 18 of their progress. And before we move on, I do want to look at this transition in a little more detail. As you can see, it shows a single progress token, and that means once a single progress token crosses over it, that player gains access to settling in the desert biome of the new world. So going into the second round of the game, blue still can't settle into the desert, but the yellow player could. In fact, it's possible the yellow player never actually settles in the tundra at all, considering they pushed progress so hard in this first round of the game. Let's focus in again. Now, this shows one progress token crossing, gaining that benefit to the player, which happened for yellow. And if both of the progress tokens cross over this spot, then that player takes one of these flipped face down progress production tiles. They flip it face up again, and it's placed on the new world, and it increases the production of each resource type by one. Thematically, this shows that the proximity of these artificial intelligence satellites getting closer to the new world is going to start increasing the efficiency of our production over there, bumping all of those tracks. Now that seems great, but there is a very important element to focus down over here on associated with this second transition. Now this shows the spending of energy. Up to this point, when we've been spending energy for our actions, I've simply been spending it from the old world because we didn't have any energy on the new world. Now this explicitly shows us that when neither progress token has crossed this middle transition, all energy has to be paid from the old world. So that means if we had energy on the new world in this first round, we still wouldn't be able to spend it for actions because neither of our progress tokens would have crossed over this second transition. The second slot here shows one progress token across this transition and the other one not. In this situation that the yellow player is currently in, 
That means you can spend energy for actions from either the old world or the new world. So it's a very flexible position to be in. That being said, once both of your progress tokens cross this transition, now you can only spend energy for actions from the new world. So any energy you have produced or remaining on the new world can realistically only be used to power ships or you can convert that energy into something else using a conversion action. So moving up this progress track can certainly be great, but you have to make sure you don't go too fast and get ahead of your new infrastructure on the planet because you might find yourself in a situation where you don't produce enough energy as you need on the new world. I suppose if you have energy on the old world, you can also transport it with ships and use it in the next turn. Either way, yellow has only crossed this with a single token, so they don't gain access to this production benefit just yet, and of course, they can spend energy from either world in the next round of the game. This token is over here. That gives them access to a sun and wind icon for settling in the next round. And considering they can settle in the desert, that means they could go onto really nice spots like this, where three population can be placed for a single action, or this one, where two factories and one population can be placed for a single action. Now, yellow does have to move this token over as well, and that icon lets them immediately gain a technology. Of course, they're going to be blocking that, so none of their opponents can gain access to that. There's another one up there, but I don't think we're going to be getting anywhere near this part of the board in this first progress phase of the game. So yellow can gain a technology and they'll choose the rightmost column that will immediately activate that lower technology. It says when they load ships, one of their evacuation bays can match any color. So remember, these are evacuation bays and that's just going to give them extra flexibility with the ships that they buy and use as they further evacuate the old world. Now, speaking of technologies, they unlocked this one earlier. That says whenever your lead progress marker passes a transition, they gain one resource. When we focus on the board, their lead progress marker has crossed two transitions over the course of this progress phase. That means each time it crossed these, they gained one resource, so they get two resources immediately. They planned for this, and they're going to have both of these be food on the old world. If they didn't do this, they wouldn't actually have enough food to feed their people, and that would have ended up giving them penalties. I'll explain penalties in a little more detail later, though. For now, yellow is done progressing which means we can finally go. Now we have nine progress overall from the actions we chose, which means we have to move nine times. Now that means we are definitely crossing this transition, which is going to cost us some production. If you don't want to cross this in the first round of the game, you can't spend more than six progress. So we obviously will go one, two, three, four. That is going to flip this over. And then we have five more progress to gain. We definitely don't want to go five, six, seven, eight, because of course that would cost us one of each production on the old world, and there's no reason to do that right now. Instead, let's go five, six, seven, eight, and then nine. We can slide this over there onto that sun, and this one can go onto that sun. So we have two suns, and we gain one resource of our choice. I feel like having energy is good. That lets us take more actions. Let's just take one energy and put it onto the old world. The reason for that is because right now we can only spend energy for actions from the old world because we have not crossed over this transition yet. All right, the progress phase is done, so we can move into the sixth phase where we gain year-end bonuses. Now, I explained this before. Remember, we are using the standard rules, which is strict enforcement of these progress amounts. Now, we do this technically in player order, but we are the only one to gain either of these. The blue player gained 13 progress. That is one too many to gain this bonus. If they had gained one less progress, they'd get two steel, but they're not complaining about their turn. They like the production that they've already created. The yellow player is next, and they did 18 progress, so they blew right past these goals, deciding the advantages they'll get from all that progress is worth skipping these bonuses. So it falls to us, and we indeed hit this, having nine progress total. So we're going to gain a steel, a food, and we're going to clone once. And that clone has to go onto the new world. The steel and the food, however, can go onto either world of our choice. And I think we'll put both of them onto the new world. Of course, in addition to that, this technology activates. It says if you gain a year-end bonus, which we did, we also gain one resource of our choice. Let's take another energy and put it onto the old world. All right, the bonus phase is done, so we've reached the seventh and final phase of the round, which is called cleanup. The first thing we do is advance the year round tracker. Then we will discard the top year bonus. So we can see in the second year, if you exactly hit six progress, you gain one steel and you can do a settle action. And as normal, you do have to spend a steel for each population that you place with this settle action. If you hit 11 progress, you gain a food and a steel in the location of your choice. The benefits for these can be all over the place. We can, of course, look ahead and in the third round, 
If you hit 7, you'd gain an energy wherever you want, and then you can prefab onto either planet without spending the resource. Or if you hit 10, you get a couple of energy. And then in this game, the last year's bonus would give you a technology and a settle action if you hit 7, and a settle action if you hit 12. The next thing we do in the cleanup phase is discard the rightmost stadium, ship, and infrastructure card, and we put them to the bottom of their respective decks. Then we slide the remaining ones over and refill the markets. After that, all players reset their actions. You slide your tracker over to the zero spot and remove all of the cards that you played underneath your board. These can simply be added back onto the stacks because, of course, we're not using the advanced action module. The cleanup phase is done, and if at this point we had completed four rounds, the game would be over. If not, then we just proceed with the income phase of the next round of the game. Now let's talk a little bit more about how the game ends, because this varies depending on the mode of play that you've selected. This tutorial so far has been showing the race mode, and the race mode ends either at the end of four full rounds, or it'll end early if someone reaches both of the race thresholds. The first of these is having all of your production on the new world at the level of eight or higher. And the second is you have at least three stadiums constructed on the new world. Now, this is one of the reasons why you might want to move this starting stadium over. It doesn't have any happy faces on it, but it does count as one of the three stadiums that you need to trigger the end of the game in the race mode. The moment anyone meets the criteria of three New World Stadiums and production of at least eight on all three of these, the game end will be triggered. If the game end trigger happens during the action phase, then we keep playing until everyone has taken the same number of actions, then the action phase immediately ends, no one else gets more turns. We then perform a transport phase, and after that, the game is over, and we check to see who won. Now before we can do that, we have to first evaluate all penalties that we have gained. Now, I haven't talked about penalties so far, and we get them in a few ways. The first way is if while you are feeding your population, you don't have enough food, then you gain one penalty for every food that you don't have. And again, that could apply to both of the worlds. During the income phase of the third round, you have to feed your population two in the new world and two in the old world. If you had one food there and one food there, you would still gain two penalty tokens. The second way you can gain penalties is by not having enough stadiums on the new world at the right time. Now, you may have noticed this track over here. It says 00123. Now, what this means is as we go into the second round of the game, everyone needs to have at least zero stadiums on the new world. So that's easy to accomplish. But during the income phase of the third round, everyone needs to have at least one stadium on the new world. This is yet another reason why it might make sense to transport this starting stadium over because that counts for the stadium. For every stadium you don't have that you are required to, you gain one penalty. At the end of the income phase of the fourth round, you have to have two stadiums on the new world. And at the end of the game, you have to have three. Once again, you gain penalties for every stadium you don't have when these are checked. And once again, when the game is over, you have to evaluate each penalty token. Now, every penalty token that we have is going to lower our worst production on the new world by one. So if we ended like this, we could choose when we evaluate this penalty, we could just say energy. And now energy is our lowest. When we evaluate this one, it will, of course, knock our energy down again because that was already lowest. Now, in addition to reducing our lowest production by one for each penalty token we have, we also reduce our lowest production by one for every population and factory disc that we did not evacuate from the world before the game ended. If the game ended right now, that would be minus five. This is certainly a big reason for why you want to evacuate the planet. Now, it's not all bad because the last thing that we do is count up the number of happy faces that we have. The player with the most happy faces will increase the production of their lowest type by two. Then the person with the second most happy faces will increase their lowest production by one. And if there is a tie for the most, then all those tied players get the two and you don't check the second place. Whereas if there's a tie for second, then all the second place players increase by one. After that, we check to see if anyone is still at or exceeding the end game trigger threshold. Remember, that is having three stadiums and all of your production over eight. If only one person is in this situation, then they win the game. If multiple players have met this threshold, then the tied player with more happy faces is going to win the game. If there's a tie with happy faces, then it's a shared victory. Now, if no one had passed that threshold after all penalties had been taken into account, then the person with the highest, lowest type of production on the new world is going to win the game. And once again, if there's a tie, then the tied player with more happy faces will win. And if there's a tie for happy faces, those players share the victory. 
So as you can see, the race mode is all about trying to avoid taking penalties, trying to have three stadiums by the end of the game, and trying to get all of your productions at or above eight. If you start taking penalties or aren't able to evacuate enough from the planet, then you better make sure your production is good enough to absorb those penalties in order to try and win the game. And of course, having happy faces is still important. Getting plus two for your lowest because you have the most happy faces is a pretty huge amount. Now, once again, I do want to reiterate that in the race mode, the game could end before we finish the four full rounds. I mentioned that if it ends during the action phase, we keep playing until everyone has taken the same number of turns. If it ends in any other phase, which is certainly possible, then you just finish that phase and then end the game. Uh, from my personal experience, the first time I played this, I triggered the end of the game during the progress phase which happens right before the bonus phase, but the game ended after progress, and an opponent who was planning on doing some settling with a bonus action wasn't able to do that before we counted up our points. Now that you understand the goals and end conditions for race mode, let's talk about the points mode, which again is not the way we've been playing up to this point. Now when you're playing the points mode, you always complete four full rounds going through every phase of every round. And during setup, when playing with a points mode, everyone is going to randomly get four of these victory point goal cards. We will then each select one of the four, pass the rest to the left, then get some from the player to the right, choose one, pass, choose one, pass. Eventually, we will all have four cards again, and we will choose three out of those four cards. So, for example, if we had these right here, we'd have to discard one, maybe that one right there, and these are kept hidden, although we did draft them, so everyone has an idea of what these goals are. Now, once the game is over, we are going to reveal each of these goals, and we're going to gain points depending on how well we actually hit them. For example, this one right here will give you five points if you have at least one of each factory built on the new world, and if you manage to get two of each type built on the world, you get four extra points. If you get three built on the world, you get six extra points instead of four. This one right here instead will give you bonuses for the number of activated infrastructure projects you have on the new world. This last one we have is specific to the steel factories on the new world. And there is a wide variety of these giving you benefits for going into Tundra, for doing things like building ships and settling the planet in various ways. Now there's actually a score pad to help you with the points mode. We just talked about those three goals that you have. You are also going to score points based off of your lowest production. So if we had this, for example, that is 11 steel production. You can go over nine and you just put tokens down here to show it. That's 11 and then eight food and nine energy. Well, eight food is our lowest. And when we look at this player aid, if our lowest is eight, we gain 10 points. Our lowest being seven is going to be seven points. Five is five. And the higher you go with this, the more points you are going to get. The jump between the lowest being nine and 10 is five points. That's pretty significant. So you write that in over here. And then we do have to account for the penalty tokens. It's a little different in the points mode. Over here, we can see that for every penalty token we gained because we didn't have enough stadiums or enough food, we are going to lose three victory points. We're also going to straight up lose points based off of the tokens we did not evacuate. Specifically, every one of these discs we did not evacuate is going to cost us two victory points. And then every population icon that shows up on these discs, another minus one point. That means this right here effectively costs four points, two for the token and two more for the two population on it. So when you're playing in the points mode, it's less costly to leave factories behind versus people. After that, points can be gained for happy faces. The player with the most or tied for the most happy faces will get six points, then four points for second and one point for third. And the tiebreakers work similarly for this as to the race mode. Now, once that's done, we count up all of our victory points and the player with the most points wins. There are a couple more rows over here. These are for extra modules. This is for public goals and that is for line majorities. And I'll briefly describe these at the end of the tutorial. So as you can see, when you play the points mode versus the race mode, you know you're going to get the full four rounds and you have many more things that you're going after as opposed to just trying to evacuate the planet, get those three stadiums built and at least eight resource production. Well, let's come back over here. Obviously, it is the start of the second round of the game and we begin with income. Once again, income is simultaneous, but it's not going to be symmetric in this second round. Let's start by doing our income. Beginning with food, we have one, two, three, four food icons, so we will gain four food on the old world. Next up with steel, we have one, two, three, four. After that, we have one, two, three, four, five energy production. We add all that to the old world, and then we gain nothing from the new world because we haven't settled there yet. We've got a ton of stuff ready to be settled out here in orbit. 
We just haven't gotten to it yet. So we produce nothing on the new world. We've got a bunch of stuff on the old world, maybe not quite as much as the previous round. And now we do have to feed. We need to spend zero food from the new world and four food from the old. And it's almost like we planned this. We have four food to spend. Next up, we can see yellow. They are going to gain one, two food total. That goes to the old world. They gain one, two, three, four, five steel. And then for energy, they get one, two, three, four, five. They can place all of this on the old world, and now they have to pay for food for the population. Now, they only made two food, but they strategically saw this coming, and they gained this two food from their benefit for crossing those transitions, so they have exactly enough food. Remember, every food you can't afford is going to cost you one penalty token. Finally, we can see blue, and they didn't evacuate anything in the first round. The only change they made to their old world production is they get one less of each type because their progress tokens did move. So that means they're going to get six of each type, and of course they will spend four of the food, so they'll get six steel, six energy, and two food. They can place that onto the old world where they already have a bunch of stuff, and then they do have production on the new world unlike both of their opponents. They are going to make one food in the new world and three steel. They've got so much stuff, and obviously, so far, their game plan has been all about production, not reducing it on the old world and making it on the new world. But you do suffer enormous penalties for not evacuating from the old world, so they can't put that off for too long. And of course, when it comes to settling in this next round, they have a single population compared to the piles of stuff that both of their opponents are ready to settle onto the new world. Of course, the blue player can clone more to settle more in this round, but there is definitely an opportunity cost for not evacuating that stuff from the old world to the new. Well, the income phase is done, and we can move into the action phase. Blue is going to go first. They've decided to begin by cloning. That is going to cost one food from the new world, and it will make two new people there. That's a quick turn for blue, and now yellow can go. And they've decided to settle. They have two population, as well as two factories at the new world. They also have a single steel, so that could construct for one population. Now, yellow has access to all of the tundra as well as the desert now because at least one of their progress tokens crossed this transition. They've decided to select this hex for settlement, and it does have a wind icon requirement. Fortunately for them, they have a wind icon right over here as well as one sun. They don't have double of either of these, so there are some locations they couldn't build into, but that's not one of them. As you can see, their chosen hex has two spots for factories, and it also has one spot for population. This is one of the reasons you want to progress in the game, because for a single action, you can get a lot more production going on the planet in these other biomes. In this case, they will increase their new world energy income by two and food income by one. So their total new world energy is two and food production is one. Well, yellow is done, which means we get to go, and we have so much stuff over here on the new world. I guess technically only one steel. That's enough to only place one population down, but there are ways to gain more steel through various actions that we can choose from. Now, we only have access to the tundra currently if we were to settle, and as far as the icons that our progress tokens are on, we have two sun and no wind. So we could settle right now, but I think for our first action, let's go here and do infrastructure. We also get one resource, and let's take one steel on the new world. That will help us with settling. And then we get two infrastructure actions. Remember, each one of these lets us either draw or play one of these infrastructure cards that we have. Now, I do want this card. I think that's good. I'm not sure about either of these. We are nowhere near being able to build into the forest biome, and we're pretty far from building in the desert biome as well. Now, we could spend a resource to discard both of these and see some new options, but I think we want to take this card, and I do think we want to try and get this online by the end of this round. That'll give us two food production on the new world, and we'll have to eat two food on the new world after next income. So those do go together pretty well. With that in mind, for the first action, we'll take it, and for the second action, let's play it. That's going to cost one steel, so we're back to just one steel on the new world. But now, as soon as we meet this condition, it will activate as a free action and increase our food production by two. So we have a goal of having two Tundra Hexes that have at least one population in them in the same line. It should be relatively easy to pull that off, although we will need at least one more steel to make that happen. Of course, we have to move ourselves on the action track. And now we're done with our turn. 
we can add a new infrastructure card here. That requires you to have two Tundra with at least one population and one Tundra with a factory, but there are no positional requirements to get that one online. All right, it's the blue player's turn, and they really like the look of that infrastructure card. They are just going to take it, I think. They could go here and do two infrastructure and get three progress, or there, get two infrastructure and one resource, but one progress, they're going to go for this one. They are going to draw this one and immediately play it. They currently have a hex with a factory and a hex with population, so they need just one more hex with population. And with three population cubes over here, I don't think that'll be too hard for them. They do have to spend one steel for this, though. And they gain one resource as well. They've decided to take another steel. That'll go onto the new world, and they are done with their action. A new one of these infrastructure cards can come out. That is similar to the one that we just took, except it requires hexes with the factories in the tundra and in the same row. All right, the yellow player can go. I just realized I forgot to reset this and move it on their previous turn. This should be there. And in fact, the blue player should be right there. They've taken two actions. Yellow can take a second action, and they're going to go here. And infrastructure is popular. <laughs> they're going to go onto this spot. They will make one steal for the new world. They will also get two infrastructure actions, and they're going to draw this and that one into their hand. So they're not playing any of these yet, but they'll have these in the future, and they can play them with infrastructure actions they take in the future. That finishes their turn, so we can see some more infrastructure cards. And now we get to go. I would like one more steal on the new world. I think that should be a priority for us. We can get it by going here or there to make that resource. And let's go here and instead of getting more infrastructure let's gain some technology now we could pick the left column that would get us a food factory immediately and in the future whenever we prefabbed food factories we could prefab a second factory of any type gaining a food factory does seem nice we do have three factories already on the new world though another thing to point out is that this could be pretty nice in the future once we advance this technology twice we can ignore all symbol requirements for settlement for the rest of the game. That does seem like it'd be pretty flexible and nice near the end of the game. This spot's pretty good too. It again takes two technology actions to activate. We would immediately gain one resource, and in the future, whenever we build infrastructure, it costs one resource less. Infrastructure can be a great way to really get our production online, and having a discount does seem nice. This one also seems pretty great, although we're very far away from it. That says your ships return to the old world as soon as they are unloaded. You have to pay for this with one energy, but that is a way to really use your ships over and over again. That does seem like something I wouldn't mind having in the near future. Maybe we should just take the factory. Yeah, okay, I've convinced myself. We'll go there. We immediately gain a food factory. We'll put that on the new world. And I do want to point out that we are component limited with these factories. We only have four of each type. Now, of course, this is our second action, and then let's gain one seal. Okay, we are done. So, it's now Blue's turn. They are going to take an action, which will cost them one energy, and they are going to prefab. That is going to cost one resource to build a factory of that type. They are going to spend a steel on the New World that will prefab a steel factory on the New World, and it'll activate this technology that says whenever they prefab a steel factory, they can prefab a second factory of any type. Now, they are going to do this, I think, on the old world. You can't construct factories on the old world, but they figure they want to use this effect, and they have lots of resources over here, and then they will eventually buy ships to transport things over, and they can transport the factory they're building. They're going to spend a food to construct a food factory. Of course, that does go to the old world, because that's where the food came from. All right, they are done. All right, it's Yellow's turn. They are going to go here. That is going to cost them one energy, and they want to settle. Before they do that, though, they're going to activate this tech that says once per action phase, they can gain a factory of their choice. They're going to gain an energy factory. Now they will settle. They're going to place this energy factory along with the population, which costs them one steel. Now they can place it into the desert, but they're actually going to go to the tundra. They are going to go here. The yellow player currently has one wind and one sun icon. So they can place here. Now that energy factory will increase their energy production by one, and that population goes on a steel spot. So their steel production also goes up by one. All right, they're done. And now we get to go, and it's time. Let's start settling. We move this over, and we don't pay the energy because this technology says we don't have to. And then when we settle, we have a lot of options. 
One thing we definitely want to do, though, is have two hexes in the tundra with at least one population in them on the same line. We, of course, have to keep in mind the fact that we have two sun symbols and no wind symbols when we settle, which is a bummer, because I'd love to go here where we could place two population and one factory, but that requires at least one wind, and we don't have that. I think let's go here. Let's put a food factory down and a population on the energy producing spot. That will cost one steel. And we finally have some new world production going. That's one food and one energy. We are done, and Blue is going to go, and they want to settle. They're going to place this steel factory along with two population tokens. This, of course, does mean they have to spend two steel. We can see Blue has one wind symbol and two sun symbols. This means they could go here. Now, they are all about the steel production, it looks like, with this. That steel factory will increase it by one, and then both of these population will also increase the steel production by one. That means their steel production goes from three all the way up to six. Maybe they are over-prioritizing that. They do want to try and have these be balanced by the end of the game, but we're not that close to the end. Also, there are actions like this that let you quickly change resources into other things, so they're not complaining. Of course, this was their fourth action, so they do have to spend two energy. And then we can see their infrastructure card immediately activates. Remember, they built this earlier, and now they have two Tundra Hexes with at least one population on them, and one Tundra Hex with at least one factory. When this comes online, that will increase their steel production again. It's at a whopping seven, and they will increase their energy production by two. As you can see, infrastructure cards are incredibly important for increasing new world production. Okay, the yellow player can go again, and they are going to go here. They want one resource and two infrastructure actions. For the resource, they'll gain a steel on the new world. And then for their first infrastructure action, they're going to play one of their infrastructure cards, specifically this one here, and that costs them one steel off the new world. So that's the one they just took. Now, they can immediately activate this because they do have at least one hex in the desert with a factory and one hex in the tundra with a factory. That comes online, and that increases their food production by two. They have one more infrastructure action, and no more steel over here to build this card in their hand. So they're going to use this action to draw that card, which is also pretty great for them. They already have one hex in the desert with at least one population on it, so they need to do that just one more time to get this one online. Of course, that does kind of conflict with the other infrastructure card they have, which wants them to have another hex in the tundra with at least one factory in a line with a previous factory like this spot. So each of these infrastructure cards will need their own settlement action to be completed. And of course, they need infrastructure actions and steel to build these onto the new world, but they like this plan overall. This was the fourth action for them of the round, so that'll cost them two energy. And now their turn can end, which means we need to see a new infrastructure card. Oh, that one requires one space in the sea biome with a factory as well as a tundra biome with a population. It does give it three bumps, but building into the sea biome is quite difficult to do. That doesn't stop people from potentially taking this with plans to complete it much later on in the game, though. All right, with yellow done, that means we get to go again, and let's settle again. This is going to cost us two energy, and let's get this infrastructure card online. That will require us to have two tundra hexes with at least one population in them. And we have one steel, so I think we're just going to be placing one population out for this whole action. That's a bit inefficient, but getting this infrastructure card online is worth it, I think. Also, when we look at this line, while I'd love to build here to be more efficient, that requires a wind icon, and we don't currently have one. So we are going to build there. That will increase our energy production by one, and it costs a steel. Also, we can see that we have two Tundra spaces with at least one population in the same line. So this comes online, and that means overall we get plus one energy and two food production. All right, things are looking a little better for us over here on the new world production front. Well, the blue player can go, and it looks like they've decided it's time they are going to construct their first spaceship. This game is called Evacuation, and while they could technically not transport anything this round and still probably find a way to get everything off the planet with a bunch of ships, it does make a lot of sense to get a ship built at least in this round. The reason for that is because a ship this round can transport over, in the third round it can transport back and then be over here ready to transport one more time in the fourth round. So essentially, buying a ship in the first or second round of the game means you'll have a chance to use it twice over the course of the game. They do, of course, have to move this over and spend three energy. They only have one energy left. Now they can buy a ship, and before they do that, 
they've decided to spend a food from the old world in order to cycle through some of these cards. They're going to keep this one around and cycle these two. They figure if they don't like what comes out, this is not a bad ship for them to grab anyway. So those will go to the bottom of the deck, and then two more come out. Hmm, they were indeed looking for a ship that had building capacity, specifically because they constructed a food factory on the old world, so that would let them transport it over to the new world. That being said, they're not completely sure which of these two ships they want. This one does cost two more steel, and it transports one extra resource. They do have a lot of steel on the old world right now. That being said, they really do want some building capacity, so yeah, they're going to go with the cheaper one. That's going to cost them two steel and two food. Obviously, they're building this on the old world, and they're just going to allocate this energy up there to remind themselves. It looks like they'll be passing on their next turn. Well, their turn is done, so a new ship comes out. All right, it's Yellow's turn, and they are going to pass. They're only doing four actions this round, so they couldn't afford another action even if they wanted to. This means we can go, and we still have a lot of energy at our disposal. We are going to take an action, so that's going to cost three of these. I guess that does just leave us with three more. And I think let's keep on settling. Let's place this right here. We don't have an infrastructure card to go after right now, and let's just put some more factories onto the planet. The sooner we can get these built, the sooner we can get the income from them. We currently have two suns, so we'll go over here. Our two worst production currently is energy and steel, so we'll go with those two factory options, which will increase each of them by one. After that, we are done, so play goes to the blue player. They pass. Obviously, the yellow player has also passed already, which means it's our turn again. Now, we do have enough energy to do one more action, and for progress, we currently have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And when we look at the year-end bonus, we've already gone past the 6. Now, 8 is 3 under 11, so if we want to gain this bonus, we need to do something with 3 progress. I do think we want to do that, especially considering our technology that gives us an extra resource when we get a year-end bonus. We have three options to choose from that give three progress, and I think we'll go with cloning. The reason for that is because it looks like we did not decide to build any ships this round. We focused on settling, so we are not going to be gaining any new population at the New World from transporting. So let's clone by spending one food on the New World. That will bring in two population, and now we have population to potentially settle in the next round of the game without needing to rely on the transports. Our steel production isn't great, unfortunately. We're only going to make one steel over there, so we'll probably have to find more ways to get steel there in order to settle this population, but that's a problem for later. I think this is a good use of our turn. Of course, we do have to slide this over and spend our last remaining energy. I'm glad we picked the extra energy up earlier because we had exactly enough to pull this off. Okay, we are done, and it's our turn again, and we pass. So, it's time for the transport phase. Remember, this happened simultaneously, and it looks like neither Yellow or us decided to buy more ships this round, so our transport is easy. We are going to spend one energy for each of these ships to transport them back to the old world where they can be loaded up in the next round. Of course, we didn't have to spend the energy doing this, but I do think it makes sense. That way we can get more benefits from the ships that we have already invested in. Now, Blue does have a ship at the Old World that they can send. They do have energy for it. They want to use their building capacity to take this factory, but instead they're going to load up their starting stadium. This is going to prevent them from taking a penalty token, and yeah, they think that makes more sense. They do also have a gray evacuation bay they can fill and they've decided to evacuate these people right here. That will flip over. That, of course, means they'll make two less food in the old world next round. So two population go into that evacuation bay. They also have a resource transportation value of one, so they'll put one of their numerous steel on it and then transport the ship over. Well, the transport phase is done, so now it's turn order, and funnily enough, no one has picked up any happy faces just yet. Uh, oftentimes, by this point, someone has at least one or two, because it is a very good idea to have at least one stadium on the New World going into the next round. That has not happened, though, so the turn order is once again going to invert. Remember, if somebody had the most happy faces, they would go earlier in the turn order. Now it's time for progress, and we get to go first. We can look down here and see that we have 11 progress points. And the first thing that we do in the progress phase is slide all of the tokens off of those spots. Everyone is now in the passing lane where any number of tokens can be. And now we must move our satellites 11 overall spaces. 
no matter what, I think we're going to be crossing this transition. So let's just start with that. We'll go one, two, three. Of course, when that happens, we flip this over. Then let's go four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven. So we'll have one wind in the next round, and we can gain one technology. Also, we can spend energy from the new world and the old world because one of our progress tokens has crossed over here. And because we crossed, we can now settle in the desert. When it comes to gaining technology, I think we should probably do this one here. We do need to activate it one more time in order to get that benefit. But considering the only symbol we have going into the next round is one wind, I like the idea of being one technology advancement away from not having to care about those symbols for the rest of the game. All right, our progress is done, so yellow can go. And this is like the inverse of last round. They had 18 progress last time, and this time they have six. With these six, they have an important decision to make. They could easily go one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. And once both of these tokens have crossed here, they would gain access to this. That would increase their energy, steel, and food production by one on the new world. That seems great. However, at that point, both of their progress tokens would have passed this transition, which means they now have to spend all of their energy for actions from the new world and not the old world. On the old world, they're still making one, two, three, four, five energy, and their new world energy production is only at three. With this, they would be making four energy, but if they don't cross over here and get access to this, they could use energy from both the new world and the old world, and they think this is probably a mistake. They're worried that would ultimately cause them to not take enough actions in the next round. So instead, they are going to go one, two, three, then four, five, six. They're going to put this onto either the wind or the sun, and they'll go with the wind. Over here, they gain a technology action. Now, they could use this to go here, so they're one away from completing their first level three technology. That effect says they build a stadium, and they do have to pay for it, and then they choose one production marker and increase it once for every stadium they have. So this could be an incredible way to get a bunch of production in the type that you don't have, as long as you have stadiums already. So they don't think it makes sense to do this just yet. They need a stadium infrastructure before it makes sense. This technology right here would be nice. Of course, they'd need to do another technology action to get it online. And it says your progress markers can stop on occupied spaces and you immediately gain two resources. So stopping on occupied spaces really opens up the number of options you can get on the progress track. This spot over here is pretty good as well. In fact, this is what they're ultimately going to go for. Now, they can't access it yet, but they're one action away. And it says once per action phase, you may perform this action without advancing your marker. Now, specifically, that is the gain one resource and transform three resources action that's right over here. And you do place an action card down when you do this, but you don't advance along here. So it's effectively free from an energy perspective, but it still gets you a bunch of progress points and crucially gives you access to a lot of resource flexibility. Also, by going here, they're working towards this level three technology, which is quite simple. It lets you settle a C site for free on the new world. You don't have to pay for it, and you don't need your progress tokens to be to the C area in order to make that happen. Many of the C biome locations are incredibly efficient at increasing your overall income for just a couple of tokens being placed. All right, yellow's done with their progress, so now blue goes. They have three, six, eight, ten, eleven. And they must start by moving this one because, of course, that one can't cross a second transition between it and the previous token. So they'll go one, then two, three, four, five, because they'd like to get access to that resource. Then they have to go six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, and they can't cross this one because, of course, that would again be two transitions between their tokens even though they love to do that to gain access to building into the forest biome. They do have one progress point still, though, which means they're forced to do this, so they won't gain access to a sun symbol. They also won't get that resource. This token will simply go down here where there is no benefits. Technically, they could also just leave it in the passing lane. Over here, they can choose wind or sun, and they're going to go with wind. All right, the progress phase is done, and now it's time for the bonuses phase. We do this in turn order, and we are first. Now, we did gain 11 progress, so we get the bottom bonus. That gets us a steel and a food. And I think we'll put both on the new world. And then over here, if we gain a year-end bonus, we gain a resource. That did happen. So let's go ahead and gain another steel over here to help settle this population in the next round. 
after this yellow can go, and they have six progress. So they'll gain this benefit. This gets them one steel, and then they can settle. Of course, they have to pay steel for the population they place, but they could use the steel they just got in order to do that. They're going to put the steel over in the new world, and unfortunately, they did not plan accordingly. <laughs> they have nothing over here in the new world to settle. They would need at least one population or a factory, and they don't have any. So they are going to forego that benefit, which is definitely a bummer. Missing out on a settle action is pretty huge. Finally, blue can take a bonus. They have 11 progress, so they will also get a steel and a food. They're going to place both of those in the new world. And now it's time for the cleanup phase. We are entering the third round, and the year bonus for this one, as we saw before, is all about getting energy and prefabs. Now, at this moment, as we go from the second to the third round, the stadium requirement has started to come into effect. Everyone who doesn't have one stadium on the new world will take a penalty token. The yellow player did this earlier. The blue player just did this in the previous round, and we forgot to do this. <laughs> I think we're doing quite well overall, and I took my eye off the ball of the stadiums. So unfortunately, we get a penalty token, and we're going to keep this for the rest of the game. Remember, that is going to lower our lowest production by one during final scoring. That's certainly a bummer, but that's the way it is. Well, at this point, we would be ready to start the third round of the game, but I think what I'm going to do is just show the income so you could see how things are changing as we go, and then stop the tutorial right before the action phase. After that, I will talk about some modules, so please stick around. All right, let's see what this third round income looks like for us. On the old world, we are getting one, two, three food, one, two, three, four energy, and one, two, three steel. We also have new world production. We will get three food and three energy as well as one steel. And in this third round, we have to spend two food from the new world and two food from the old world. Remember, each food we can't pay is going to give us a penalty token, but it looks like we didn't take our eye off that ball anyway. So going into the next round, we've got quite a bit of stuff over at the new world, and we've got lots at the old world. We'd probably want to make another ship perhaps over here and send three ships back over in the transport phase of this next round. Because our tokens did cross the second transition, we can spend energy from the new and old world for actions. Overall, that is six energy. Not a ton, especially if we want to send a bunch of ships, but those are just part of the things we have to keep in mind in the next round. Now we can see that yellow gains one, two, three, four, five steel on the old world. They also get one, two, three, four, five energy and two food. That's still quite a lot of stuff for the old world, considering we're supposed to be evacuating. Uh, I've definitely seen people evacuate quicker in other games, but they could use all this stuff to make more ships and get a lot of evacuation happening in this round. Now, they also produce one steel, three food, and three energy on the new world. And they can spend energy from both worlds for actions. They have to spend two food to feed the population from the new world and two from the old world. So no penalties there. And they've got a decent amount of energy in this round. Looks like 10 to spend. Finally, we have blue. Technically, this should be flipped over because both of their progress tokens have passed the first transition. On the old world, they get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 steel. They get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 energy. And 1, 2, 3 food. They can add that to the pile of steel they had on the old world already. And on the new world, wow, 7 more steel. <laughs> 2 energy and 1 food. They, of course, need to feed their people, spending two from the new world and two from the old world. And they have so much stuff. Now, this is largely because they have done the least evacuating of all of the players. So they have the most engine going on here. They do have to get that stuff off the old planet before the game is over. But with 12 steel over here, they can certainly build some ships. Uh, they've got a ton of steel over there. Normally, people don't build ships on the new world and send them back to the old, but maybe they'd consider it, or maybe they just put this into building stadiums. They need to have two stadiums at the end of this round and three by the end of the game. And of course, making stadiums also gives you happy faces, which pushes you up in the turn order. Well, income is done, and the game is halfway over. I hope at this point you have a good idea of the flow of this game. Obviously, even more of this is going to be going away as we are transporting over to the new world, and it's going to get even more crowded over here as we are trying to pick up these spots and figure out how to maximize these infrastructure cards as we are doing it. At this point, the main tutorial is done, but I do want to talk about three modules that you can bring into the game. The first of these is the biggest, and that is the Advanced Action Module. From a rules perspective, this module is very simple. You will always have four of these action cards in your hand, and when it's your turn during the action phase, you can either take any of these cards, 
put them face down and activate one of these columns, just like we saw already. Or you could play one of these cards face up. You, of course, have to move this over and spend energy accordingly. And then you do everything that the card says in the order of your choice. The cards also show you the progress levels, sometimes having variable amounts. For example, this one right here lets you build a ship paying one extra steel, but it's worth three, four, or five progress when you check your progress. So that flexibility can make it a lot easier to hit those end of your bonuses or specifically move to very precise spots on the progress track. Now, these cards give you a huge variety of mixtures of these icons. For example, this one right here lets you research, get an energy, and prefab an energy factory. This one lets you do infrastructure and building a spaceship. You can do things like this, gets you a clone action and prefab. You can get a ship and also settle the planet. There's just a ton of variety, and some of these give zero progress, which is an interesting thing to keep in mind. Now, every turn, again, you're going to choose one of your four, put it face up or face down, and then draw a new one into your hand. At the start of each of the rounds, you also draw until you have seven cards and discard down to four. The other element to this module is you place this blocking token over here. Now these icons are the same, but it says 1x. So the first time you put a card face down over here to do this action, you flip it over and you will not be allowed to do this again for the rest of the round. So this is a once around thing, which adds extra constraints to motivate you to play more of those cards from your hand. Although from my experience, you don't need that much motivation. Those cards have great options on them. Now, I do want to point out that you can use the advanced action module with the race mode or the points mode. It's up to you. Oh, one other thing to mention about the advanced actions module is you should use the generous interpretation of the year end bonuses instead of strict when using those cards. The second module to discuss are public objectives. At the start of the game, you randomly pull three of these out. As you can see, they are double sided. You put these face up on the board and the moment anyone meets the requirement on the left side of that card, they take it. So for example, this one right here having three ships, that one right there having five technologies. Now, when you take this, it goes into your hand and then you can play this one, spending those resources in order to gain the associated benefits. That's gonna be victory points. As you can see, you only use these in the points mode version of the game and they also help you increase your new world production. The last module also must be used with the points mode, and this is the line majority module. You flip this card over, and then you place these randomly out onto the associated spots. So this shows the Tundra 2. That's right over here. So we'd randomly flip this over. This is also Tundra, but it says 4, which is right over here. So we randomly flip this over. And then this 6 is over at the forest. And again, that's randomly placed. We actually have another set of these so we can complete the line. And then at the end of the game, the player with the majority of overall sites within each of these three specific lines will get six points, second most will get four, and third most will get one point. And you deal with ties in the same way as the happiness scoring. So this gives you yet another consideration for where to build out here on the new world. Well, at this point, I've now covered just about all aspects to the game, and that means this tutorial is coming to a close. I hope you enjoyed learning how to play Evacuation. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.